Hi everyone, welcome back to Teacher FYI. I'm Mackenzie, a fifth grade teacher in California, and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing everything that you need to know to make the most out of Google Classroom. So Google Classroom works as a learning management system for you and your students, so you can assign work, grade work, share resources with your students, and communicate with them. So this video is going to be broken into four sections, Google Classroom setup, assigning and grading work, student view, and family communication. Now to make your life a little easier, I will be adding timestamps so you can just jump to each section directly. And before we get started, if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. I will be uploading new teacher tips every week. And if you do enjoy getting teacher tips, please give this video a thumbs up because that really helps support this channel. So let's go ahead and get started with Google Classroom setup. So the first thing you're going to need to do is to log into your Google account. Now this will need to be your school account because you will be using this with your students. Now from the Google homepage, you're going to click the waffle in the upper right hand corner and find the Google Classroom app. Now to create a new class, you're going to click this little plus sign and select create class. Then you will type in your class name and then if you want to add the section, subject, or room. For now, I'm just going to put fifth grade, trimester one, and then click create. Now it's going to take you directly to your Google Classroom homepage for your class. Now notice that underneath the title of your class, it has the class code, which students will need to join your Google Classroom. Here you can select the theme for your classroom or upload your own photo for the banner to add a little personal touch. So when you select the theme, it does have some pre-made options for you that could go along with different subjects. If you do teach multiple subjects or different sections of a class, then I do recommend creating a separate Google Classroom for each section and then color coding them so it's really easy to see which class you're working with. So for example, if you teach three sections of science, then you could have one class red, one class blue, and one class green. Now, if you want to add that extra level of personalization to those classroom banners, then you can also upload your own photo. And if you do want to know how to make your own classroom banners, then I do mention that in my Google Classroom Tips and Tricks video, so be sure to check that out. In that video, I go over how you can customize your own banner using Google Slides and Canva for Education. I really like to change the banners throughout the year just to add that extra little touch of fun for my students as they log on. I normally like to change it every month, or if it's a student's birthday, I will have the banner say, Happy Birthday! birthday to that student, which they're always excited to see. Since right now it's the beginning of the year, I made a banner to welcome my students to fifth grade, so I'm going to upload that photo and place that as the banner. Now depending on whatever theme you selected or photo that you uploaded for your classroom banner, then Google Classroom will automatically just choose a color theme for the rest of your classroom, which changes the colors of the headers and all the titles that are in your Google Classroom. As of now, there's no way to actually change those colors, they just automatically choose one for you. So right now we are on the stream. So this is going to be where you can post announcements to your students, and students are also able to post their own announcements and comment on the post from the stream. Now I do recommend using the stream purely for teacher announcements because it really keeps the stream less cluttered and then your students will always know that that is where they will go to hear announcements and reminders from their teacher. So to do this, I'm going to click settings. Now this is where you can change your class details at any time if you want to. And right now, since I want to adjust the stream settings, I'm going to go to stream. Notice right now it says students can post and comment. Now you can change this so that students can only comment or to only teachers can post and comment. Now I prefer to allow students to only comment so they can still interact with the post and share their voice. But I do want to make sure that my students can still comment on the post because I let them use the stream as a really casual space where they can comment on my announcements, communicate with each other, and ask questions if they have them. For classwork on the stream, you have a few options. If you have show attachments and details, then every time you post an assignment or material, the history of that is going to show in your stream with all of those attachments. Showing condensed notifications shows that you did the action, but it doesn't have all the attachments included. And then finally, high notification will hide it completely, leaving only your announcements in the stream. So I prefer to hide those notifications so that when students go to the stream, it's just, again, less cluttered and they just see announcements from the teacher. Then you have the option to show deleted items or not. And then for grading, you can select what type of grade calculation you want. You can choose to show the overall grade, the total points, or have assignments and tests weighted by category and whether or not to show the grade to the students. Now, once you're done with your settings, you're going to click save. 
So now your basic settings are all set up for you to use with your students. You can post announcements and reminders to them right in the stream. Students are able to comment so they're still able to share their voice in that way. And you can also schedule announcements ahead of time. So if you wanna get ahead on those morning messages, then you can actually plan those out, schedule the date and time, then they will automatically post on that date. You can also reuse old announcements if you need to by clicking reuse and then you can go into the history and select the one that you want to repost. So now that you have the stream all set up, your next step is going to decide how you wanna actually organize all that classwork for your students to actually be able to find easily so they can be really efficient when going onto Google Classroom. So my recommendation is actually organizing all of those assignments using topics. So when you are in classwork, you're going to click this little plus sign and click add topic. So topics are basically headers in your classwork so that you can organize all your assignments and resources in different categories. And you can easily click and drag drag the topics and assignments throughout once you have more classwork in there. So something I like to do to help my students be able to find work easily is that I first add a topic for daily links. So these are links that my students are going to use a lot and I'm going to put those right at the top of my Google Classroom so my students can easily go and find those. So that's going to include our class calendar, our weekly agenda, and other online websites that they use frequently. I also add a topic for may do options like Epic or Prodigy. So that can work as a choice board that my students know they can go to and I might want to change that out throughout the day or throughout the week. There are so many different ways you can use topics to organize. I have found that organizing topics by date and the week of school that we are on has been the most helpful for my students to be able to find their assignments. So I'm going to click add topic and then I'm going to use the dates for that week, type it out, and each assignment for that week is going to go under that topic. All right, so now your classroom is pretty much set up, but now we just need to add the people. So when you click people, you're going to see teachers and students. So you are able to add other teachers. For example, if you have a special education teacher that works with some of your students in the class, you may want to add them, or you may want to add your grade level partners. In the past, I have found it really helpful to add my grade level partners because then we are able to actually see how each other's classrooms run online and see what assignments they're on so that we can all be on somewhat of the same page as each other. Once the teachers are added, you will of course want to add the students. So you have a few options to add students. You can click invite and share the link with students, or you can just type their email or their name and that should pop up from your school directory since they will have Google emails already. Or you can have students open up Google Classroom from the homepage just like you did when creating the class and instead they are going to click join. Then they're going to enter the class code. So if you remember from the stream homepage, you can click the code and then enlarge it so students can easily see the code and then they can type that in to join your class. All right, so now you are completely set up, ready to add in some work for your students. All right, so now it is time to actually assign work to your class. So to do this, you're going to go to classwork and click create. Now this is where you will be able to create an assignment, a quiz, a question, add materials, or even reuse a post from another Google Classroom that you have. They all work pretty similarly, so I'm just going to show you how to create an assignment. So when I click assignment, you can give your assignment a title and add directions. So because I'm a multiple subject teacher and I am organizing all of my classwork based on topics, I'm going to add little emojis in the title of the assignment to help my students know what subject that assignment is for. So for all the assignments, I choose an emoji to represent math, to represent reading, writing, science, social studies, and I'm really consistent with using the same emoji for every subject so that my students know exactly what that assignment is for. That way when my students go to their assignments for that week, they can easily see what each assignment is for. Select the emoji that goes along with that subject, and then you can type out your directions for your students. So for example, if you want your students to fill out a graphic organizer you made using a Google Doc, then you can click the drive, Find the assignment that you want to attach and it will attach the graphic organizer. You can also upload files that you have that are PDFs, add links, videos, 
or attach another option from the Google Suite of Education depending on the assignment. You can also add multiple items for one assignment. So for example, if you want your students to first watch a video and then fill out a graphic organizer that goes along with that video, then you can attach both of those items into the same assignment. Once you select your Google Drive file for your students, you're going to want to select what type of access you want them to have. So you can select if you want your students to only view the file, be able to edit it, or if you want each student to have their own copy as an individual worksheet, for example, then you're going to want to make sure they have their own copy to edit. Now this is where you can customize who you're going to assign it to. You can select the whole class, you can send it to only a group of students, which is great if you are creating a differentiated assignment or working on a group project, or you can give it to individual students. Google Classroom also just made it possible for you to assign the same assignment to multiple classes. So if you have multiple Google Classrooms and you teach multiple sections, now you don't have to retype those directions more than one time. You can just select which Google Classrooms you wanna assign the assignment to, and you can even adjust the due dates for every class. Now you're going to select the amount of points, enter the due date, the topic you want it to go under in your classwork list, and then you can also input a rubric if you have one that goes along with that assignment. Once you're all done, you can click assign if you want it to just assign to your students right away, or you can schedule it for a different time by selecting the future date and time that you want. Now looking at classwork, you can drag and drop the assignments to different topics as you need. A quick little tip, you can also reuse old assignments. So even if they are from an old Google Classroom, you can click reuse assignment and then find that assignment that you want to reuse and then assign it directly to your students and it'll automatically have the attachment needed, the template and the directions. So this is really helpful if you have something that you always assign to your students. Like for example, I really like using this for reading responses since I give them the same reading response template every week. Now the last little part I want to show you about the classwork tab is the Google Calendar and the Class Drive folder. So I really recommend teaching your students how to use that Google Calendar because then they'll be able to see exactly when their assignments are due. If they have multiple Google Classrooms then they can actually see all of the work that they have coming up and it can really help you and your students stay more organized. The class drive folder will be where you can see all of your assignments that have already been organized by a folder for each assignment. So when you click into each folder, then you're going to see each of the students' individual assignments. All right, so now that you have assigned work to your students, that means it's going to start coming in and you are going to need to grade it. So in Google Classroom, you can select each assignment individually and then you will see how many students have turned it in and how many you have returned back to the student. When you open an assignment to grade, you can leave comments on student work, use the comment bank, which I highly recommend doing, and also use the rubric to grade if you uploaded and made your own rubric when you created the assignment. Using rubrics does make it really easy to just assign a level, issue those points, and leave comments with just that click. Everything is already totaled for you, which makes it super easy. You can also reuse old rubrics if you have rubrics that have already been created from a previous assignment, then you can easily add those in when you're making your assignment. Now some tricks to access that gradebook. So you can either go to the grade section of your Google Classroom, or if you go to your classes from the Google Classroom homepage, then you can click this little arrow and it will take you to the gradebook showing you every student. So you can clearly see who is missing work and what you still need to grade. You can also click review in the pull out sidebar, and then it's going to show you all the assignments that you still need to grade. That can be kind of a scary sight. If you're like me, that can be pretty intimidating around report card season. If you have multiple classes, you can select which Google Classroom you wanna look at to review. You can also select students individually if you want to only look at one student's progress. I have found this really helpful when doing report cards or if having an online conference with a parent, it's really easy to pull up that student and share that work with their families to really show that student's progress. Now, when grading, say there are five students that are missing an assignment, or just forgot to click that turn in button. You can actually go into that assignment and email students based on the status of their work. So to do this, you're going to click on the assignment, sort by status, and then click email, and then it's automatically going to put the assignment title into the subject line, and then you can send a friendly little reminder to those students that they're missing their work. You can also email all the students. So to do this, you're going to click people, select students you want to email, and send out your email. 
So now let's take a look at Google Classroom from the student's perspective. It's really helpful to know what the students actually see so that you can help troubleshoot if there's a problem. So when students join your class, they're going to enter the class code and then they're going to see your little profile picture with the class on their homepage. It can click into the class and there they are into the stream. As a student on the stream, they're able to only comment because I adjusted the settings. Now do keep in mind as a teacher, if a student chooses to make some unkind words in the comments, then you are able to mute that student so they can no longer comment on the posts. On the left here, they're going to have their to-do list with all of the assignments and upcoming work. When they click classwork, they're going to see their assignments and their due dates. Under classwork, they can also view the Google Calendar, which again, I highly recommend teaching your students how to use. They can see when their assignments are due and use those organization skills. When they click the class drive folder, they can look at all their assignments from that Google class. So if they wanna open an assignment, they can see the details that the teacher gave them, including any of the attachments. Then they're able to add attachments of their own for their work, including from Google Drive, a link, a file if they need to attach maybe a photo of their work, or any of the other Google Suite apps. If it's an ungraded assignment, then they just click Mark Done when they're done with it, or if it's a graded assignment, then they're going to click the Turn In button. They are also able to send a private comment to the teacher, which is great if they have a question about the assignment and then you can respond to them there. So notice on the assignment, they're also able to add a class comment. So all students are able to actually see the comments that are posted on assignments. So I really like to encourage my students to ask questions about assignments in that comment section so that if I don't see it and another student sees it first, then that student might be able to answer and help that student out. And that really creates a community of helping one another and not always going to me for questions. And then once students turn in their work, they're able to unsubmit it or resubmit it if they want to make any changes. If a student wants to see all of the work that they have to do, which is especially helpful if they are enrolled in multiple classes as they get older, they can click the to do in the pull out sidebar and look at the work they have been assigned, is missing, or is done and has been graded. They can sort it by all classes or just by each individual class. So that's just an overview of the student perspective. If you want to keep families and parents in the loop and up to date about your classwork assignments, then you can also connect them to the Google Classroom so they can actually receive updates about their students' progress. So to do this, go to the People tab and under Students, you will see all of the students and then you can click Invite Guardians and input each of their email addresses for them to join as the guardian. And then as the guardian, they're going to be able to choose how often they receive updates. So it can be daily or weekly, whatever they prefer. And then in those guardian summaries, they'll be able to see what work their child is missing, any upcoming assignments and their class activity. You can also select to email all guardians if you want an easy way to email all of those parents. I really recommend using Google Classroom as your main learning hub so that's a reliable location for all announcements, reminders, using that Google Calendar for your assignments so that families and students know exactly where to go to know what is due. So that is everything that you need to know to make the most out of Google Classroom this year. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. You are officially a Google Classroom pro if you stuck with me until the end. That is everything that I feel you need to know to make the most out of Google Classroom this year. If you did enjoy this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for all my newest teacher tips and I will see you next time. Bye everyone.